On the screen here, I have two inference problems, and these are, you know, they usually are paragraphs where they give you a scenario of someone took a sample, and they're gonna ask you, what can you use this data to say? And the key here is to identify what type of people are being sampled. So when you sample people and you get that data, you can only apply that data to the same type of people. So let's read the first problem here. The members of a city council wanted to assess the opinions of all city residents about converting an open field into a dog park. The council surveyed a sample of 500 city residents who own dogs. The survey showed that the majority of those sampled were in favor of the dog park. Which of the following is true about the city council's survey? So before we even read the options, let's think back. Who are they sampling? and we see that they are sampling 500 city residents who own dogs. So they only sample dog owners, meaning we can only apply these results to dog owners. So let's look at the answers. A, it shows that the majority of city residents are in favor of the dog park. No, it shows that the majority of dog owners are in favor of the dog park, so not A. B, the survey sample should have included more residents who are dog owners. They're all dog owners, we don't need any more, not B. C, survey should have consisted entirely of residents who did not own dogs. So this one can be tricky because you're like, we should have included people who didn't own dogs, but we want opinions of all city residents. So we want people with dogs and without dogs. So that one's wrong, leaving us with D. By default is the right answer, but let's look at it. Survey sample is biased because it is not representative of all city residents. That's true. It's only representative of dog owners. Let's try this again with the next question. Let's read the question. In order to determine if treatment X is successful in improving eyesight, a research study was conducted from a large population of people with poor eyesight. So the sample is people with poor eyesight, so we can only apply these results to people with poor eyesight. 300 participants were selected at random, half of the participants were randomly assigned to receive the treatment, and the other half did not receive the treatment. The resulting data showed that participants who received treatment X had significantly improved eyesight as compared to those who did not receive treatment X. Based on the design and results of the study, which of the following is an appropriate conclusion? People with poor eyesight who took this had improved sight. That's what we saw. Let's look for that in the answers. Treatment X is likely to improve the eyesight of people with poor eyesight. That sounds good. We'll leave that for now. B. Treatment X improves eyesight better than all other available treatments. Was it tested against other treatments? No, can't pick that one. C. Treatment X will improve the eyesight of anyone who takes it. No, we only apply this to people with poor eyesight, so that's not applicable. And D. Treatment X will cause a substantial improvement in eyesight. Didn't talk about whether it's substantial or not substantial, so it's not that one. Back to A, that's right on the money and improve the eyesight of people who have poor eyesight. So inference questions, make sure you identify who is being sampled and what is being tested. So the applying questions, they're gonna give you a sample out of a certain amount of people, and they're gonna want you to apply it to a broader category. The key here is to find the percentage or the ratio and then just apply it to the bigger category. So let's read the question. After a three month long motorized scooter pilot program, City A randomly surveyed residents on their feelings about scooters. Of the 276 residents surveyed, 50 have positive feelings towards the scooter. Based on the survey results, approximately how many of the city's 500,000 residents do not have positive feelings towards the scooter? Our sample here, it's 50 had positive out of the 276. So 50 over 276, and it's asking for out of 500. So we just set up a simple ratio here. But the key, and I underline this in green, it's do not. So this was do have positive feelings, this was do not. We wanna make sure we're answering the question in the end. But first, let's find, you know, positive feelings scaled up. First thing I'm gonna do, and this is a trick for any question, whenever they say approximately, you can start rounding your numbers. So we have 50 over 276, I'm gonna make it 50 over 275. This is gonna make it easier, and now I can just scale down this fraction. I'm gonna divide everything by five here, so that's gonna become 10. 275 divided by 5, 0, 5, we got 55, and we can make that even smaller, divide it by 5 again, get 2 out of 11. Then we have 2 out of 11 equals x out of 50, cross multiply, get 11x equals 100, and that's going to turn out to be about 91. And you can see that they bait you with this answer, but it's not A, because they're asking which ones do not have positive feelings. So if 91 have positive feelings, that means the rest have not positive feelings. So 500 minus 91, which is 409. And that's our answer. 
So key here is to set up a ratio or find a percentage and then just apply it to the bigger amount. You gotta watch out here though and make sure that you're answering the question because a lot of times they'll give you one statistic but they'll want a different one for the bigger scaled up version. That's it for stats. Uh, on this channel, I have my free SAT math course. If you're interested in these free lessons, subscribe for more.